Good afternoon and welcome to BASIC. Today I'm going to be talking about the concept of the mole, a chemical counting unit. Now, anyone working with chemicals needs to know not just what substances they are using, but also how much of that chemical. Now, the mole helps us to keep track of that particular chemical. Remember that when we were looking at balancing chemical reactions, we were adding whole number coefficients in front of those chemical species, right? So we had reactants on one side, so they're on the left, and those were combining to form products, which were on the right-hand side. Now here in this unit, we are looking at chemical quantities in detail, and we're looking at the mathematics side of these questions. We'll come back to the counting in the chemical reactions when we take a look at future lessons on stoichiometry and the limiting and the excess reactant or reagent as they're called, right, with mole ratios. Here, we describe the mole as the amount of a substance that contains 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles. Now, this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, is what we call the Avogadro's constant. a little messed up here. Now with our Avogadro's constant, in a mathematical equation, we denote this as n subscript a. So this is our variable. And with the Avogadro's constant, when we say that we're describing the amount of a substance in terms of chemicals, this 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles can be either number of atoms, formula units, molecules, and sometimes even ions. So in a particular question that you will come across in the textbook, in a worksheet, on a quiz, test, or final exam, uh, case study, and so on, certain questions will tell you that you have a certain amount of atoms or a certain amount of formula units, and you might be working backwards or forwards to figure out the number of moles of that substance or the amount of mass of that substance, and how that also corresponds to the Avogadro's constant. And there are two equations which will also become useful to help us determine how to work with this number of 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Where we have this specified mole, which has the units of mole, the Avogadro's constant, Na, is reflected in particles per mole. So the 6.02 times 10 to the 23 will be in terms of particles per mole. So that could be in terms of atoms per mole, formula units per mole, molecules per mole, or even ions per mole, and so on. The mole is in units of mole. We give that the variable n in the equation, and then the particles themselves that we'll be calculating will have the variable n. So we come up with an equation that we can use to calculate, which is known as n is equal to n times Na where n is your number of particles, and again, that can be any of these particles here, so this is what n is referred to as. The small n is your number of moles, denoted as mole. So just like how we have a centimeters for a length and we determine the units of cm, here for moles, the units are mole, M-O-L, and then the Na is your Avogadro's number or your Avogadro's constant. And you don't have to calculate the Avogadro's constant. Remember that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles
thermal. And the particles here will change, remember, depending on the context of the question. And it will be this number of whatever particles, atoms, formula units, molecules, etc., per mole of the substance. Another equation that will be handy later on will come about where we're going to use n and relate that to the concept of mass and molar mass. But I will save that for the next video. So we're going to move on and use the new equation that we have here and solve two questions to see how we can apply the concept. And hopefully you've already watched the videos that I've posted on your Google Classroom so that this already makes sense and you know how to work with the Avogadro's constant. You can also um, use a handy tool. Some people like something called the pyramid or the triangle where the small n is on top and we have an n and an a. And everything is set up in this triangular format. And they know that n is on top. We know that n is equal to n times na. And that if you want to figure out what your n is, you would take n divided by na. Vice versa, to figure out Avogadro's, you would take number of moles divided by the number of particles. So this is also the triangular method. So depending on how you like to learn equations, and mathematics. Maybe the triangle method works for you. Maybe just knowing this works for you and rearranging your variables will help you out. Okay, so this is the multiplication component. If you wanted to find out what your number of moles would be in that situation, then remember that the number of moles then would be equivalent to doing some type of division, right? Because you would rearrange. Right, so I won't show all that. We'll see that coming up in an example. So for our first example question, we have how many iron atoms are there in a 3.00 mole sample of iron? And remember, iron is element Fe from the periodic table. Now, the way I like to set up these questions is using what I call the grasp you might have heard of this before in your math class. So the grasp or the grasp method, where we write down given information, required information, followed by an analysis, a solution, and then we paraphrase, or we write a sentence. So that's where the other S stands for, the sentence, right? Or a statement, a therefore statement. So let's start off by writing down what we're given. So G stands for given. So we're given some information about the number of moles or N of iron, and that's equal to 3.00. Also, what you should know in the background is your Avogadro's constant. So that's what you're also given in these questions. So let's also write that down. Okay, and in the question two, we're told where we're asked how many iron atoms are there in a 3.00 mole sample of iron. So we're looking for atoms. So these are the particles that we're interested in in this question. So we're going to replace that word particles for these units. So we're going to write atoms per mole. So those are our givens. Okay, what's required? Well, what's required is we're asked to figure out just the atoms of iron, or we're looking for N. Okay, these are the atoms on their own. So this is what we don't know. Our analysis is to go ahead and use the equation n equals n times na. Or solve for the number of atoms using 
the number of moles multiplied by the Avogadro's constant. So that brings us to our solution. So we'll write down our equation again, this time plugging in what species we're solving for. So that's our iron. So this way we stay on track. And then we'll plug in all the numbers. So we don't know our atoms of iron as yet, but we have three moles. We're going to multiply that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms per mole. And I'm going to write this in a bracket so everything in scientific notation stays together. Now, I'm going to need to do some multiplication. What will help you in your calculator is if you write this number here for your Avogadro's constant and keep this all in brackets in your calculator. If you, keep, if you don't put brackets, your calculator may get confused, so know how to work with your calculator, and you will get a number that will correspond to just the atoms. What you will notice is moles cancel, and you're left just with the number of atoms. So I'll give you a moment to solve. And you should get an answer equivalent to your atoms of Fe. Right? If you're pulling out your calculator, right, you will turn your calculator on, right, depending on whatever calculator you do have available. I'll just uh, plug in mine as well. And we're going to do 3.00 times bracket 6.02. And I need my exponent for 23. Close my bracket. So I get an answer of 1.806 times 10 to the 24. If you see a little E on your calculator, that means that you have an exponent raised to the power of 10. So what my answer should be, remember significant digits. So you have two decimal places here, two decimal places here. So if I go back to my calculator, I can round up. So it's 1.81. And to the 24. So my answer is 1.81 1 times 10 to the 24 atoms of iron. So what did I do in this question to recap? I was working with the equation that number of particles, in this case number of atoms, is equal to the number of moles times the Avogadro's constant. I filled in the information given in the question, substituted and solved in order to get my answer. Moving on to example number two, I will follow the same process. Now example number two, an 18.9 liter bottle of water used for an office water cooler contains 6.31 times 10 to the 26 water molecules. What amount in moles of water makes up one liter of water? So I think we've repeated a bit, so let's just erase this. Okay, so again, start with what's given. Think about what you need to find, so what's required, and set up your equation. Right? Remember to write down everything that's needed. Remember water. What is your formula for water? H2O. Right? And we're going to write down everything that we need in the question. So let's start with what's given. So I'm just going to write a G this time. So what are we given? We are given a volume. So if you really want to write down the volume, you can.
whether or not we're going to use this. We'll see later. Right, but besides that, we have some information about the number of molecules. So remember, number of molecules is right here. What does molecules represent? So that's the variable N for our H2O. And that is 6.31 times 10 to the 26 molecules per mole. And remember, you always have Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And what are your particles this time? Your particles are molecules. So I'm going to write down molecules. And I should make a correction here and take off oops, this part here. This part should be the molecules per mole. OK, what's required? Well, it says what amount in moles. So we're looking for number of moles of water in this water cooler, right? So for the 18.9 liter bottle of water. Analysis requires the same equation as before. N equals N times NA. OK, but this time we're going to have to rearrange slightly because this is the variable that's required. So instead, what we're going to do is, if you're multiplying two variables, remember your algebra, you're going to be dividing out your Avogadro's constant from both sides to get rid of it. So you're going to divide out an Na here, divide by an Na here. So number of moles equals N divided by Na. So this is the form of the equation that we're going to use to solve. So we're going to do our solution now number of moles of water is equal to the molecules of water divided by Na. Plug in the numbers that you were given, so 6.31 times 10 to the 26 molecules. Divided by Avogadro's constant, Notice that molecules will cancel. And you will get your answer in moles. So whip out your calculator. Make sure you're working with a scientific calculator so that you can do the division. And again, what might be easier is write these things in brackets on your calculator as well so that the math is easier to follow and do the computation. So again, I will do the math. Let me clear my calculator. We have 6.31 to the 26 divided by Avogadro's number. And I get this value, 1048.17. So 1048.17. Now, if I want to write this in the correct significant digits, I could also write this in scientific notation if needed. But I'll just keep this here right now. But remember that this number of moles is reflective of the 18.9 liter bottle, right? The question is asking us for one liter of water. How are we going to solve that? What do you think we should do? Well, you have determined the amount of water in 18.9 liters. 
So to determine the amount of water in one liter, what you will need to do is, is multiply the amount of moles that you just solved for um, by the conversion factor, which is one liter divided by 18.9. So what we're going to do is we are going to solve, and I'll write this in a new color, mm, I guess green. So in one liter of water, what we're going to do is take that value and multiply by one liter over 18.9. So this is dimensional analysis. Okay. So basically we're getting rid of these liters. And when you solve on your calculator, you should end up with 55.5 moles. So hopefully when you solve that out and you do the math, remember that you could solve this by cross multiplying, divide out the one, and you should end up with the final answer of 55.5. If you end up with this answer here, this is for 18.9 liters of water, but the question is asking us for one liter of water. So the right answer would be 55.5. So hopefully these two examples are helpful. They show you how to work with number of moles and the Avogadro's constant to solve for different types of particles, atoms, molecules, and whatnot. Remember to use brackets in your calculator wherever possible. And if you're wondering as well how to round this, number here, the 1048.17 number in your calculator to scientific notation to get proper significant digits. This would round to 1.05 times 10 to the 3 moles. Okay, so if you were following significant digits. So I'll see you in the next video where I will discuss number of moles, mass, and molar mass. Take care.